Hi and welcome to this video on how to use meshes as a mask in a post process material. So as you can see here I have a bit of an example. We have a cube in the middle of the screen which is functioning as a mask. So I have a line effect post process material which only works where the cube is. Okay so and this can be done with uh, any any uh, different uh, sort of mesh at all. So for example if I was to bring in a, um, a sphere I, I can do the same thing with the sphere and I'll, and I'll break down how how it works because there's two sides to this. There's the post process material in itself and the uh, and the settings on the mesh. So first thing is I'm going to increase the size of the mesh that we've got here. Now there's a few settings which I want to change. Now I'll change the color of this mesh to something more visual to start off with so that we can see the change quite a bit more. So say I wanted to use a sphere as a mesh, as a mask. I can grab the sphere here. I'll move this out of the way and get this in place here. So um, if I was to place that in here, what I can do is I can. Um, so the first thing I can do is I want to um, not render this in the. Um, I want to render it in the custom depth pass. So I'm going to search for custom and you can see I have an option to render in the custom depth pass. So if you've never touched a depth pass before, what it is, is it will show the screen. I'll, I'll show it here. So if we come under buffer visualization and come up with a depth pass scene depth, you can see it's going to return um, the distance based on a value of zero to one. It's actually quite different how it shows it within a material. It will it will it will give you a measurement in centimeters, which shows up as just usually bright white because anything over one centimeter is going to come up as white. Um, but I'm rendering this in a custom depth, so this is going to be in a depth pass on its own. It might be a might be an option to see that within the. Uh, visualization. Have we got custom depth? No, it doesn't. Yeah, here we go. Custom depth. So now you cut, it's a little bit hard to see because we're not that far away, but we've got just this mesh in the custom depth. Come back to lit. And we can also see that we've lost the color because this is working with the post process volume at this point to give us the area. Now, the next thing I'm going to want to do is because we can't see through it at the moment. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to stop rendering it in the main pass. So I'm going to untick render in the main pass and um, we still can't see through it at this point and that's because we have the depth buffer still in play. So if I um, untick render in the main depth pass, not the custom depth pass, you only want it to render in the custom depth pass. You now see we can see through this. Um, so it's got a kind of crystal ball esque effect. Now, there's a couple of other things that we might want to do at this point. We might want to get rid of the shadow. So if I just type in shadow and get rid of the shadow by going cast shadow. And you might want to change the collision to prevent people from, uh, otherwise, you won't be able to walk through it. So you can just change that in the pre collision presets and I just set to no collision. So at that point you'll be able to, to move through the splodge accordingly. Okay, so that's how you set up the mesh. Now let's talk about how we would create a post-process material. So the, f the first thing is in order to see a post-process material and turn G on, you can see that I have a post process volume here. And under the post process volume, we'll have the option to add in a post process material. And it gives you an array, and all you need to do is push plus, change it from choose to asset reference, 
and then take your post process material and plug it in there. There's something else you might want to do. Um, uh, post processes are, are usually locationally based, so you only see it if you're inside it. However, you probably want to have this unbound. So unbound, what this is going to do is rather than it only working if you walk inside the post process volume, it will, it, it will be infinite extents. It will affect the entire level. Okay, so that's that side. Now let's have a look at the post process itself. Post process material. So this is our post process material. Now the first thing with post process, post process material is you want to make sure you've got the correct domain. So if you're creating a material, you want to change the material domain to post process. Now the next thing that is worth noting on this is we have a LERP. Um, and the LERP is interesting because what this will do is depending on the alpha value if it's a 1 it will show B and if it's a 0 it will show A. So this is how we're going to flip between our two different uh, paths. So this is this is the mask. So all I've got on one is the normal path that's a scene texture set to post process input 0 and we have here um, a outline material. Now this could be anything. This is just just a, a random outline material um, I, I use occasionally, but it's just used for demonstration values. So we're flipping between these two values here. Now um, we're going to be using the custom depth. So I'll show you a simple custom depth pass here. And now that I've turned this on and using this, if I jump into the level you can see that the effect is still working. However, what we don't have is um, our character showing up in front. So it's working as a kind of x-ray effect. So we no longer got the depth or what's referred to as occlusion culling. So that's when something is in front of something, it, will, it occludes it and uh, that is no longer no longer shown. So we want to we want to add in the occlusion culling for this. But this might be an effect that you're coming you're you're aiming for. However, let's add in some occlusion culling. So again, I'm just going to change it over to the second piece of code here. So that's just looking at the custom depth pass. This, however, is taking the custom depth pass and the scene depth and it is subtracting one from the other so that we can get a difference. So this means we're only going to see a mask where the custom depth is less than the scene depth. We've also added in a cutout for the sky here because the sky gives us a little bit of problems when we're putting together the mask. So if we apply that and look in notes, we can see that we've now got this effect here where anything that is in front is, is not going to have the effect on it and anything that's behind is going to have the effect on it. So yeah, quite, quite straightforward in that case. Right, so um, finally, yeah, there's one other thing that you might want to set. When working with post-process, the blendable location is usually quite important. So you can see here I've changed this to scene color after depth of field. If I was to turn that back to its default position and um, check how it looks, you can see we get a very different uh, effect, a bit jittery. So um, if you find that you're getting an odd jittery effect, play around with the blendable location. I usually find that the scene color after depth of field will give me one of the best, uh, one of the best, most solid effects. Okay, um, I think that is, I'll just compile and apply that. I think that is the entire thing. I hope that was useful. Bye.